Hello guys, welcome back to another Neo 2 video, and in this video I'm aiming to try and share some of the more advanced techniques within the combat mechanics, in some cases weapon specific, as in the case with the single sword, but there will be a lot of things that apply to all weapons and useful to all players, even if you're a beginner at the game. Of course there are hundreds of examples of techniques that could be considered advanced, and so there's likely to be many things left out of this video, but I could make more like this if people enjoy it. So as well as showing off specific techniques, one of the things I really want to get across in this video is the concept behind being creative in utilising all of the mechanics in this game to come up with your own techniques by combining things together. A brief look at the contents I'll be covering in this video will be things like animation cancelling, especially with things like IE quick draw and similar skills, transitional skills, for example skills that can transition from a key pulse or other mechanics that could be chained into unique combos, dash dancing and using evasion skills for mobility, as well as using evasive skills offensively, weapon switching and how to use two weapons in a balanced build together, or simply using a secondary weapon to set up combos for your main weapon. So to get things started, there are some things you want to be aware of in terms of the samurai skill tree. Pretty much any build you play with any weapon is going to want to have these skills unlocked in the samurai tree, those skills being flux and flux 2, flash attack which performs an attack on weapon switch, all of your key pulse and running water skills for each stance as well as the purify yokai realm for each stance. When it comes to advanced techniques there are some basic things that need to be covered first. We're not going to go super basic in terms of how to key pulse and stuff like that because I don't want to waste time for people who already understand the basics. You know you came here for an advanced guide so that's what we're going to try and cover but one thing I need to go over is skills that transition from a key pulse. This is because many of the advanced techniques are built on top of that. So a transitional skill would be something like any R1 plus circle attack such as i.e. quick draw or sign of the cross. As you know, when the weapon is drawn it needs to be sheathed in order to be able to use the skill. Of course there are ways to bypass this through animation cancelling, which we will get into, but the reason they're called transitional skills is because they're able to auto sheath directly from a key pulse. This isn't as fast or as difficult as animation cancelling, which is why it isn't considered an advanced technique, but it's a fundamental mechanic to be comfortable with due to its synergy with other things. For example in high stance, with these samurai tree skills, key pulse heaven and purify yokai realm heaven, you can prepare two attack buffs with your transitional skill for big damage simply by using this technique at the peak of a key pulse. So it's important to remember that even with advanced techniques, in some cases it's better to fall back on these basics as in some situations it would be more beneficial to sheath in this manner than it would be through something more complicated like an animation cancel. So moving on to animation cancelling, specifically when it comes to quick draw skills, this will work for any weapon that has an R1 plus circle draw attack. The best time to use this technique would be in situations where you're mobile or want to attack without having a setup, i.e. no key pulse to transition from. There are various ways to do this, the most common is actually the most complicated and one I really use, so I won't spend a lot of time on it, but it's done after a dodge, then walking half a step before double tapping R1 circle. It's very finicky and lacks consistency due to this, but if you really want to learn it, practice dodging and then immediately walking half a step forward and then double tap R1 circle. The far easier method is to simply just press L2, which will aim your ranged weapon. This will completely sheath your weapon, allowing you to immediately throw out a quick draw attack. And it can be used after any attack or an evade. So for example, you're in combat, you evade, press L2, then R1 circle. I suggest spending some time learning the timing on this, as this is hands down the easiest method to bypass your sheath animation. Now the other easy method is more situational in terms of your build or secondary weapon, but this method is why most people choose to run sword as their secondary weapon, mostly for the evasive utility of sword in low stance, but we'll get to that later. So this technique is the weapon switch sheath bypass. So if you pair any set of weapons that have an R1 plus circle attack, you can easily throw out a quick draw attack anytime for either weapon. For example, I have sword and dual blades here. As you know, to weapon switch, you press R1 plus down on a directional pad. However, to quick draw from your secondary weapon, all you have to do is press R1 circle for your draw attack, but hit down on a D-pad at the same time. So R1 plus circle plus down. Not only does this bypass the sheath animation, it can be used after any attack or dodge or dash, but you can also chain your two weapon draw attacks together. For example, I'm just going to keep R1 plus circle held down here the whole time. All I'm doing is pressing down on the D-pad every time my key pulse window appears. As you can see, I'm chaining sign of the cross into IE quick draw over and over. The whole time I'm just holding down R1 plus circle and I'm simply pressing down on the D-pad during the key pulse window. Once you've learned that, you can practice having more control, for example, with ultimate sign of the cross, you have to press square after sign of the cross, which means releasing your fingers from R1 circle. So to combo back into IE quick draw, it looks like this. 
R1 plus circle for sign of the cross, release my fingers, then press square, then R1 plus circle again, and hit down on the D-pad. We're now back into IE quick draw on the sword. And once you've learned this, you can practice utilizing this practically with dodging, which allows you to create space for setups. For example, you land the ultimate sign of the cross, dodge backwards to create safe distance, then immediately weapon switch into sword IE quick draw. As mentioned earlier, you can combine multiple weapons this way, and I'll show you some examples of that on screen, such as with the hatchets. However, at the time of this video, sword and dual swords work best together for one specific reason, in terms of build synergy, and that's because up until now it hasn't really been possible to have sign of the cross damage inherited onto all of your armor, so by stacking IE quick draw damage onto your armor, you're not really losing anything by playing dual swords in that same build with single sword, so dual swords and Kuntana are one of the two best hybrid weapon builds you can make at the moment. The next thing I want to talk about is evasive skills and how to use them offensively or to set up combos. Most weapons have an evasive skill and it's usually found in the low stance. For example on the katana you have swift step and on the dual swords you have dual dragon. The way these skills are typically used is to either evade incoming attacks or to use it to set you up positionally for a backstab attack as they both position you behind the target. It's also important to note that both these skills enable transitional skills due to both these skills providing a key pulse opportunity at the end of them. So learning to use these evasive skills to set up quick draw attacks is a very important part of your toolkit. However, there are ways to set up similar situations without direct evasive skills or transitional attacks. For example, the katana is very unique in that in low stance, especially in light armor, you can get some pretty crazy evasive utility just from the basic low stance quick attack. As you know, any weapon can keep pulse dodge after an attack. However, most weapons have an issue where attacking whilst at full sprint is going to stop your momentum. Katana, or I should say single sword, can quick attack in low stance without losing running momentum, which allows you to spam dash and dodge from your quick attack while simultaneously key pulsing. This is great for so many reasons. The mobility aside, let's look at some of the practical usage for this. Let's say you're low on health and you have life on and Ritter absorption rolled onto your gear. You can easily dash in, hit the enemy, then dash away. And if you have extraction talisman, this is going to heal you while staying out of danger. It also allows you to set up crazy combos and quick draw attacks without key pulse transitions. So you can bait attacks, then get out of danger while still being in range for a quick draw attack. For example, a quick dash in, an immediate dash out, L2 sheath cancel into IE quick draw. Let's show that again in slow motion. Dash in, the enemy AI is now going to attack the spot that we dashed into, but you've already dashed out creating distance. You've hit L2, which cancels the sheath animation, and then you've gone straight into an IE quick draw. At this range, even if you were to miss or if the enemy were to still reach you, you have more time to evade out of there due to the distance you created earlier. So we've spoken about using evasive skills offensively, now I want to talk about defensive skills and how to use them offensively. As a quick example, with Tempest on the sword, it's an ability that's renowned for being quite difficult to pull off, as opposed to just using something like a direct parry, especially as it's made for mid stance, where most people just go to for their parries anyway. However, with enough practice, you can learn to judge when an enemy's key or their guard is about to be broken, and by what skills in order to do that. So in this clip, I knew that switching into high stance and using a strong attack was going to break the opponent's guard so I immediately switch back into mid stance to smash L1 to activate Tempest. Now I'm not going to cover this technique in detail because this isn't a sword guide specifically but I'm mentioning this to emphasize the thought process on how to link many different skills together. So for example I very rarely use mid stance except for parries. I'm most likely going to be in low stance for evasive utility and key management then switch into high stance for high stance damage modifiers or strong attacks but this leaves one big advantage for mid stance and that is the active skills I'm free to assign to it. Because I'm never going to use I quick draw in mid stance, I can put something else in there in place of it that opens up my options. So let's take the dual swords hidden skill, Punish the Proud. It's a great little parry skill for mid stance that will knock enemies down. The problem with this is, if I want to transition directly from this into sign of the cross or weapon switch into IE quick draw, in most cases the enemy is going to be too far away for me to hit them because punish the proud knocks them away. But because I'm in mid stance and I rarely use IE quick draw in this stance, I can put another skill here in place of it that will reach the enemy in mid stance. For example, Tiger Sprint. So after landing Punish the Proud, I can transition directly into Tiger Sprint, run towards the enemy, slash them, transition from there back into Sign of the Cross, and from there I can either change stances and continue as normal with IE Quick Draw, or I can just stay in mid stance to land a parry. 
So again, it's the concept that I'm trying to emphasize here of linking all kinds of skills together from different weapons to different stances. Each stance should be like a completely different playstyle that allows you to bridge all things together. So I think for now we've covered a good amount of things so far. I'm happy to continue making videos like this if you guys enjoy them. I'll of course continue making build videos. I might make the next build video one based on the things shown in this video like my sword and dual sword hybrid build. I have a lot of quote unquote advanced builds that I don't usually share on this channel due to them being niche. But after this video it might be worth posting at least one. So by the way guys I'm also thinking about sharing my discord link for Neo players. Typically it's for Monster Hunter guild members but I know a lot of people are always asking in the comments about inheritance trading so just let me know if you'd want me to set something up in my discord for neo and i'll definitely consider doing that as always you can catch me over on instagram for daily content as well as twitch which i've taken a bit of time out from recently but i'll try and get back to that too soon if you like this video please hit the thumbs up and if you're not already subscribed consider doing so for more neo 2 content coming soon okay guys until next time take care